Captain Dendra Weaver says she's fought tough battles throughout her decade-long career in the West Virginia National Guard. I think I'm pretty tough. I've seen some stuff and you know, I had my breaking point in Afghanistan. But the real battle, she says, started when she returned home to Charleston, West Virginia. The inappropriate conversations that were very lewd and sexual in nature that he would send me. Uncomfortable private Facebook messages from her high-ranking boss. She says she tried to avoid him until one day he ordered her into his office. He said, Captain, if you repeat one word I say in here to anyone, I will kill you. Do you understand me? Frightened he could destroy her career, but wanting this sexual harassment to stop, Weaver says she went to the one woman she felt she could trust, Lieutenant Colonel Teresa James, one of the highest ranking women inside the West Virginia National Guard. She was a fast tracker. But what Captain Weaver did not know. I was like, oh my God, he's going to do the same thing to her that he did to me. Is James also had a secret about the very same man. I did not want to have sex with him. And, and it was right. James says after Weaver confided in her, she started to hear about other women claiming they too were sexually harassed or assaulted by the same man. Dealing with that guilt of, had I said something earlier, you know, perhaps, you know, if I wouldn't have been so selfish. Perhaps they would not have had to do what they had to go through. Lieutenant Colonel James says she now felt it was her duty to come forward and report her rape, even though she says she had kept quiet for years because she was worried it could destroy her 30 plus year career. And she says that's exactly what happened. James says she tried everything she knew, filing complaints with the Department of Defense, the National Guard Bureau, and a sexual assault response coordinator. She told me that they didn't believe me. Because she and her alleged attacker were high-ranking officers, the National Guard dispatched a special team from its Office of Complex Investigations, which substantiated her case. But James says she was told the state of West Virginia did not have the money or the authority to bring a court-martial against her attacker. Instead, like most Guard units across the country, they had to rely on the local law enforcement where the assault occurred who told James their statute of limitations had expired, meaning there was only one person left who could punish her perpetrator, West Virginia's yeah, Adjutant I mean, General, really James Hoyer. I believe that the, the cases that we've dealt with, with the tools that we have, uh, we have done the maximum level of punishment that we can under the system that we have available to us. General Hoyer says he agreed to accept the officer's resignation in lieu of adverse action instead of pushing for a dishonorable discharge because the officer was so close to retirement. The two-star general says he also delayed the officer from getting his $62,000 a year pension by placing two letters of reprimand into his file. Of one of the what reasons that we've done those is to uh, impact their ability not to get a job in a federal agency or a state agency. But Captain Weaver and Lieutenant Colonel James say they think the officer got off lightly, while they both feel retaliated against by being ordered to undergo medical evaluations, questioning whether they were fit for duty. It was a career killer. It was, absolutely. I absolutely have been reprised against. We have not retaliated against individuals and all the cases that have come forward to us related to sexual assault, sexual harassment, inappropriate conduct, we have a record of dealing with perpetrators. It's probably one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do is to report that. Um, Harder than going to war? Yes. I lost everything and I did nothing wrong. I lost my opportunity to continue to serve, be a full bird colonel. It was a goal. And it'll never happen. 
Nestled in a narrow mountain valley, the snow surrounding the West Virginia National Guard's headquarters gives the impression of a calm and quiet place. But the News 4i team has uncovered documents showing a battle of the sexes raging behind these walls. As a female, um, whether you're enlisted or an officer, you have to be faster, better, stronger at everything you do. And you learn that really quick. A lesson Captain Dendra Weaver learned on the battlefield, but one she says she never thought she would have to learn yet again when she returned home from Afghanistan, when she made a sexual harassment complaint against one of her commanders. I think he was dead serious when he looked at me and he said, I will effing kill you. He, there, he was not joking. The investigation into her complaint unleashed a barrage of complaints from other female soldiers. In written statements obtained by the News 4i team, female service members described a boys club attitude, resulting in them often called derogatory names with multiple complaints of sexual harassment. In response, one male officer told investigators he felt the females are whining and such over promotions. The Army is not a wayward home for girls. It's not the Girl Scouts. The Guard's investigators sustained several complaints of physical assault, chairs kicked and other objects thrown at service members, and women admitting they do not feel safe working there. Even the Guard's sexual assault victim advocate told investigators the soldiers and officers inside this Guard unit don't have each other's backs as they should. I don't know how this would work if they were sent to the battlefield. We determined the best way to go about addressing this situation is I've got to affect change to the culture and the environment of the organization. General James Hoyer took over the West Virginia National Guard the same year the complaints started to surface inside his organization. Normally the adjutant general goes out and visits his troops and he looks at what they're doing militarily, how, how they're training, the things that they're getting ready to go to, to war to do. But I decided to do it with my unit visits was to spend less time observing training and take part of that time to do town halls. The two-star general tells the I-team during those town halls he separated women from the rest of the unit so they would speak honestly with him. He says at least 24 have come forward claiming they were sexually assaulted or harassed, including Lieutenant Colonel Teresa James, who according to a recent National Guard report is the highest ranking officer in the nation to come forward with a rape claim. I thought with my longevity, my years of service that the leadership would view me as a very credible person, believe me, and and support me, and that's not what happened. Lieutenant Colonel James says her attacker resigned because, as the I-team revealed, the state does not have the legal authority to court-martial soldiers for criminal offenses. General Hoyer says he can punish offenders financially by stripping them of their pensions and issuing letters of reprimand, which is what he says he did after an investigation found James's perpetrator was physically and sexually assaulting junior officers. Um, pleased that the town hall is having an impact. I'm frustrated that we're still dealing with this issue. Uh, I'm frustrated that there are people that uh, take advantage of other people uh, that impacts our organization's ability to do the things we're supposed to do, be prepared to take the nation to, to war or to respond to a disaster that may occur. So I think my frustration lies more with uh, as much as I think we're having an impact here and we've got you know, people coming forward, is it coming fast enough? Is change coming fast enough? Her career was ruined and that she is being forced into retirement, that is not what should happen to a victim. West Virginia Delegate Barbara Fleshire says she was alarmed when our News 4i team investigation revealed the state's National Guard unit doesn't have a way to criminally punish soldiers accused of rape and sexual assault. According to Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel James, there's no procedure for court-martialing at all in West Virginia under these circumstances. Even though Congress recently passed major reforms to combat sexual assault in the military, the I-team found most do not apply to National Guard units across the country because they are state militias which must follow their state laws. When we spoke with the head of the West Virginia National Guard, Adjutant General James Hoyer, he insisted Lieutenant Colonel James was not 
not retaliated against and did not think West Virginia needed to change the state's uniform code of military justice. We don't have a criminal investigation division, so we have to rely on our civilian law enforcement partners who have the experience, who have the crime labs, who have all those uh, things in place. So. Uh, I think right now, based on what we have and the relationship we have with our, our folks in the civilian court system and law enforcement, we've got the tools we need. The statute of limitations in Lieutenant Colonel James's case ran out. California lawmakers just eliminated their statute of limitations for rape in the military, one of several states that have recently overhauled their laws to protect service members from sex assaults. Delegate Flashower wants West Virginia to be next. In response to our investigation, she's introduced House Concurrent Resolution 155. It has 14 co-sponsors and creates a special committee to study what Flashower calls a very complicated issue, so the House can craft a sex assault bill to prevent retaliation and properly prosecute offenders. She fears if they don't do something now, it could lead to a dangerous problem inside the Guard for future rape survivors. Well, if they hear about what happened to Lieutenant Colonel James, they won't come forward. I would say that it's something that everyone's uncomfortable talking about. And I now see it as in, I don't have a problem talking about my situation. Major General Linda Singh says she was a young enlisted soldier when her supervisor started making inappropriate advances towards her, even ordering her to go on a non-work-related trip with him. She refused. I really pushed back. I actually went to my leader. I went to my first sergeant and got moved out of that section because I did not want to work for this individual. That's hard, though, in the military, right? To it question is. authority. It is. It is. But I don't think that I, I, I when I look at it, uh, I had been through enough in my life. And I think that I was a little different than someone else because I had already been a victim. What few knew at the time was Singh had been repeatedly sexually assaulted as a young child by a relative, and again as a teenager by a different family member. I had went to bed. And, you know, I woke up and he's on top of me. So, you know, when you're, when you're at that point, it's completely wrong. I, I couldn't get my thoughts about me. And the fact that this was already happening was just, it was just appalling. I mean, it, it's, it's one of these things that I can't even express what I felt and how, you know, things were going. Do you think that makes you a better leader when it comes to dealing with sex assaults within the ranks? I think that it allows me to come from a, a very different place in terms of understanding, you know, what it means from the, the perspective of the victim. But I also think that it helps me to understand what the perpetrator and what their motive is. And um, because it's really about power. Uh, I think it also makes me very non-tolerant. I am not tolerant whatsoever to having that kind of behavior occur. But as the News 4i team discovered, Maryland is like many National Guard units across the country that must rely on civilian law enforcement to investigate and charge service members for rape, sexual assault, and sexual harassment. There's a gap, at least here in Maryland, there's a gap. And when I say there's a gap, if I was to, to call the police and say someone is, is sexually harassing me, they may take the complaint, but they're really not going to do anything to that individual. Singh and her staff are exploring possible changes to state law, pointing to the Kentucky National Guard, which can now conduct criminal investigations similar to an Article 32 hearing in the federal system. Singh says she is currently using the punishments that are available to her, like writing letters of reprimand for inappropriate language to dishonorable discharges for sexual assault. I'm going to tell you that I've had some very senior people that no longer wear the uniform and no longer have a full-time job here in Maryland. Um, I've taken it very seriously, and these are individuals that I've known for years. Now a two-star general, Singh is the highest ranking officer in the military to openly talk about her own experiences with sexual assault and harassment, something she says she's going to continue to do until there's a cultural shift within the Guard. The only way that we can deal with this is to talk about it. And we have to get more comfortable talking about those things that are uncomfortable.
Nearly two-thirds of service members who report sexual assault say they're also victims of retaliation, according to a new report. It was released by Human Rights Watch today, interviewing roughly 150 service members who say they've encountered reprisals that range from threats and vandalism to discharges and criminal charges. One of the women interviewed was Lieutenant Colonel Teresa James, who first told the News 4i team she believes her 34-year career in the National Guard was destroyed after she reported she was raped by her supervisor. There's nothing else they can do to hurt me. Um, they they did everything they could possibly do, so it's it's affecting change. That's why I'm not today. It's affecting change, and if I have to speak, shout it from the rooftops. That's what I'm going to do. In a statement, a spokesperson with the Department of Defense tells News 4, quote, we agree that ending the retaliation is critical to effectively addressing sexual assault in the military. And over the past year, we have intensified our attention to this issue and are taking a number of steps directed by the secretary to better understand the problem and to address it. To see that list of what the DOD is doing along with this new report, visit our website, NBCWashington.com. Kimberly Davis says it started like any other night when she and about 20 others in her National Guard unit went out to the bar. So it wasn't unusual for all of us to be drinking. Davis says she became so intoxicated, her supervisor drove her to his home. I remember kind of laughing and saying, get off of me, like, what are you doing? In my head I was thinking, is he crazy? And then I blacked out. When she woke up, she says she realized she'd been raped by a man who outranked her. I didn't have any clothes on. Um, I, I did hurt a little bit and I quickly um, realized something bad had happened. Davis was so afraid of retaliation, she says she endured eight years of harassment by her attacker before finally making an official report. The New York National Guard tells the News 4i team it followed the process to investigate her claim, but eight years makes it very difficult. We can't say it didn't happen, but we can't substantiate her claim. But we do applaud her courage to come forward. Davis says her attacker retired a few months after her investigation, while the retaliation she so feared became a reality. It changes who you are. Um, I feel like they robbed me of, um, of that fun person. I'm not fun anymore. If we want people to be coming forward early, when perhaps the evidence is going to be available and prosecution will be possible, we need to make sure that they know that their careers will be safe. Megan Road is the lead author of a recent Human Rights Watch study that found, based on interviews with military survivors, they're 12 times more likely to face retaliation than see their attacker convicted for sexual assault. But she says no one has been able to get any numbers from the military on retaliation or punishments. What happens to the perpetrator? and what happens to the victim, that's critical. The National Guard Bureau tells the News 4i team, we are aggressively working to understand the scope of the problem to determine a way forward. But when we ask the Guard Bureau for statistics on how it investigates sex assaults, including retaliation and punishment outcomes, the Guard Bureau admitted it did not have that data on a nationwide level. We were told reaching out to each state National Guard would likely be the best way to go. But in an internal email obtained by the News 4i team, the Guard Bureau also told all of its units to hold off and not give us this information. And in another internal email we obtained, the National Guard sent out a message asking all Guard units to start collecting this data because interest in the National Guard has increased exponentially. That's when we sent out a survey to every National Guard unit in the nation, asking them 10 questions about how do you investigate sexual assault and what kind of punishments have you handed out? We got responses from 40 out of 54 units, giving us our first numbers about what actually happens to those accused of sexual assault in the National Guard. We don't have the basic information right now. The, the, your survey was the first slice of information we actually have. 
New York Senator Kristen Gillibrand says even Congress hasn't been able to get the information we gathered, and she was stunned by what we uncovered. Only six states held a court-martial for sexual assault within the last five years, resulting in just three incarcerations and one dishonorable discharge. Most states used less serious types of discharge or administrative punishments like letters of reprimand. Some allowed attackers to resign or retire. I mean, these are felonies. These are criminal charges in the civilian system. If you're convicted of a rape, you'll go to jail, and you'll go to jail for a long time. The National Guard Bureau declined our request for an on-camera interview, but tells us it is a tenant of military command that commanders have unimpeded discretion without undue influence to discipline those under their command. And each case stands on its own merits. Unlike the rest of the armed forces, the National Guard says it's not required by Congress to collect data on case outcomes. It told us it's making progress convincing adjutants general to provide this data, but welcomed a congressional mandate to force them to do it because we feel it is important. Well, I think it's great that you took the time to do the survey because it really shines light on a huge issue that we don't have the level of transparency and accountability that we need on these serious criminal cases in the National Guard. We've only just skimmed the surface of what we found in our survey. You can read in detail about what each state said, compare their laws, punishments, and investigations side by side, and see what they want the Pentagon and Congress to do to help them stop sexual attacks in the military by going to NBCWashington.com and clicking on investigations. Tisha Thompson, News 4 I-Team.